We are with Brent Collette, and he is a camp director here at Camp, it's Clara Barton Camp, but this week we're at the Joslin. Yep, Camp Joslin. Camp, right. Um, and it's a camp for kids with type 1 diabetes. Tell me the background of the camp. How long has it been here? Do you know? Yeah, so the camp opened in 1948. Uh, been around every year since then. Um, primarily a place for kids who might feel not the most normal when they're at home, might be the only one they know going through um, the daily battle with type 1 diabetes. Um, mm -hmm. A place where all of them can get together, meet some new friends, learn some new things, try something new. Um, we have a lot of campers who do something for the first time in relation to their diabetes here. I know that happened to me when I was a camper. Um, and a lot of our campers are the ones who become our counselors here too. So it's a really special place. Wow. Do the kids come from all over the place? Are they mostly Massachusetts? Or? A good majority of them come from Massachusetts, New York, Connecticut area, but we have kids from all over. Um, we have a few from Florida this year, a couple from California, um, one currently here right now from England. And in the past, we've had kids from anywhere ranging from Spain to South Korea to Puerto Rico and other areas of South America. Wow. And how many campers are here at one time? Uh, new to this year, we can hold up to 107 campers. Um, right now we have, I believe, 103. So it's a pretty full house and wow. really awesome time for everyone involved. So normally the girls are at the Clara Barton camp mm -hmm. in Oxford. And this year they are here. And what's the story behind that? Uh, after we were rebuilding from COVID, so all summer camps were having a tough time getting back their full enrollment. Um, okay. We combined everything into one place. Past two summers we were at Clara Barton. This year we came back to Joslin because we have some brand new cabins over there um, that were getting built. So wanted to get everyone back over here and hopefully next year open up both spots and have everything back the way it was before. Excellent. But Clara Barton, didn't she founded Red Cross, right? Yeah. Yep. And so what's the connection with diabetes, do you know? I think she worked with Dr. Joslin and then okay. they started with the Camp for Girls in Oxford and then Camp for Boys here because the uh, Clara Barton camp opened before this camp did. The girls did? Yeah. Okay. That's unusual. I believe it was 36 that CDC was first open. So they usually come for a week or how long? <laughs> One or two weeks. Uh, we do have a handful of kids who have been here the entire summer though. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. And some of them I imagine are here, for, they haven't been away from home ever. Nope. Right? I know my granddaughter last year. What's yeah. that like? Uh, for some of those kids, it can be a little scary at first, uh, you know, dealing with some homesickness on day one or two. But usually they get through that, uh, make some new friends. The counselors are really awesome at helping them out, getting them excited for the new things. Uh, we see a lot of kids who go from that where they're, you know, maybe crying out of the car. They don't want to be here. They're scared <laughs> to then having that same effect when they have to leave because they don't want to leave. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Tell me all of the activities that you have. Oh, there's too many to list. I'm probably going to forget a few of them, but we have Capture the Flag, dodgeball, basketball, you know, all your team sports. Um, we do swimming every day. We have boating too, um, fishing. We have a dance every Tuesday, a cookout every Wednesday, archery. We have a climbing wall, uh, arts and crafts. I'm trying not to forget any, but there's a, there's a very long list. So you have a pool? A uh, pond. You have a pond. Okay. I think there's a pool over at Camp there uh, is, Clara yeah. Barton, right? Um, so what do you do in terms, or do you any, uh, do, you, do you do any? It's not loud here at all. They're not having any fun. It's just crazy. <laughs> do you do any diabetes education while they're here? Yeah, we do a mix of formal and informal education. Um, the formal one, we try and make it as fun as possible, whether it's a Jeopardy game or a bingo style game. Uh, a lot of the informal education comes from what we call teachable moments, where say we're out on an activity and a camper notices, oh, you know, my blood sugar goes low every time I run around. Uh, that's a moment where another camper or some of the staff members might be able to chime in and start a discussion around that. We also have, um, during our cookout nights, time where the cabins just talk about things 
life and diabetes related and kind of get themselves filled in on things through that route. Okay. Um, and I understand, uh, like a lot of these kids, their parents monitor their blood sugars. <laughs> I know. They monitor their blood sugars through their apps and yep. through their phones. And is that different when they're here? Yeah, we do have parents unfollow their campers when they're here. Mm -hmm. um, part of that is because if everyone were to call at once, if they noticed, oh, my camper's blood sugar is trending down or trending up, um, we'd be flooded with concerned parents and it might take a little bit of time for them to, you know, reach who they might be trying to reach. Uh, because everyone has a different interpretation of what they would do at home versus um, when they're at camp. And also, it's a vacation for the parents too. Mm -hmm. Your camper is here under great care. By the time you reach us, we're already handling the problem that you might be um, calling about. And on top of that, we want you to have a break where you don't have to feel like you have to worry about checking blood sugars all the time or waking up at 3 a.m. to mm -hmm. see what's going on. Right, that's a constant thing for some parents. I know it is for my kids. How many medical staff do you have here? Um, right now we have one per one healthcare team member per cabin. Um, so we have seven cabins, so seven plus we have two who are on in the infirmary at all times. Um, so that puts us at nine healthcare team staff, a charge nurse, so 10. And then every single week we have two doctors on site, um, two mm. medical professionals who typically specialize in pediatric endocrinology, who also review all of the campers' blood sugars every day, help make adjustments to insulin as needed, and are also available for any questions we might have along the way. Do you find, or do they find, maybe you don't know this, um, do they use less insulin when they're so active while they're here? I think that they do. Um, I know that upon check-in time, we tend to um, more so look at dropping the amount of insulin they would have just in the background, their basal insulin, just because they are potentially way more active here than they are at home. Um, I know that's how it was for myself. Mm -hmm. I was always on like half the amount of insulin. Mm -hmm. um, so I think for the most part, yes. And then things change throughout the week too as the doctors are looking at everything. They might adjust some insulin needs down or depending, they might raise some up depending on the time of day. So, but generally speaking, definitely a little bit less. I would think so. Um, so I bet you have more of a problem with people having to make sure their blood sugar doesn't go too low than too high, right? Yeah, and I wouldn't even say it's a problem really, especially yeah. with all the technology now. We yeah. notice a lot of things as they're happening or before they happen. Um, you can so. react before it becomes a problem. Yeah, absolutely. And we have a new EMR system this year too, where we're able to look at all kids with Dexcoms, all of their numbers on one screen. It sorts them from lowest to highest, and so we're able to keep track of that all in the infirmary as well. That is awesome. <laughs> Tell us about your diabetes journey then. Okay. Well, I've had diabetes for 24 years. I... Oh, yeah. He's got one eye on the kids yeah. and one eye on us. <laughs> so I've had diabetes for 24 years. Um, I started coming to camp in 2003 and I've been here every year since. Um, so I was a camper from 2003 to 2010. Then a counselor myself here from 2010 to 2014 assistant director from then until 2017 and then full-time camp director from then on and I'd say diabetes has really opened me to a lot of opportunities with camp where I've met a lot of my closest friends and family from having diabetes and being able to meet other people going through the same thing so I think my diabetes journey is largely tied to this place too. Wow what was, what was, so how old were you when you were diagnosed? Uh, I was just before my sixth birthday. And were you uh, the only one in your family? Yep, I was the only one, still am the only one. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. And so what was that like for you as a kid, going to school with kids who didn't have diabetes? Did you feel different, left out of anything? I wouldn't say that I felt left out. Part of it was I don't really remember not having diabetes. Um, okay, so yeah. during school, I do remember distinctly my parents um, giving a book to all my teachers. It was a children's book basically about it that we would read to the whole class that was like, I'm no different than anyone else. <laughs> um, and then all my friends used to fight over who would be able to be my buddy to the nurse every day. So. 
I think in a way some of them felt more left out than I did. How did being at camp here change your life? In countless ways. Um, I think the major ones would be that one, being able to meet these other people like me, it's easy enough to you know, talk with your family and say, oh, my blood sugar feels low or I'm feeling off because my blood sugar feels high and they can do their best to sympathize with you, but everyone here really fully understands those feelings within themselves as well. Mm -hmm. And then also, I don't think I'd be nearly as comfortable with sharing my diabetes or being as independent as early as I was without camp. Um, this is the place where I did my first sight change on my own. I learned about various different pumps and technologies, so I was really able to get exposed to every aspect of each year of growth with diabetes and see, you know, I can really do this on my own. Um, everyone else is doing it. This person's mm -hmm. doing this, this person's doing this. Why can't I do that? So right. it really opened me up to being more open with my friends at home with diabetes and not really shying away from anything with it. Every year we have probably 50% new campers, 50% returning campers on a rough estimate. Um, but throughout my time here, I've seen campers who have gone from the youngest cabin to the oldest cabin and now are counselors themselves. There are some people who I know who were campers when I was a counselor who now have families of their own who have gone on to do big careers. So I think that just in general, this place lends itself to a really awesome community. Excellent, that's great. Well, thank you for spending the time with us. I know it's a little chaotic, but... Um, <laughs> I apologize for being distracted. No, no, that's, that's perfectly understandable. So maybe we can get some shots of what the kids are doing and talk to my granddaughter. Absolutely. Let's do Thank it. you. No problem. Thank you. All right, so this is Elise Sonnerberg, my granddaughter, <laughs> well, I love very much. <laughs> okay. Okay, stop, Grandma. So tell us about your experience at camp here. Well, it's really fun. Yeah? The counselors are really nice, but there's a bunch of bugs. <laughs> and this is your second summer? Yeah. Right? So what have you done that's been fun so far? The activities. Which ones? Mm, hitting the counselors with the ball. Oh, okay. And you said you did a skit? Yeah. What did you do? A wedding skit. A wedding skit with, with some of your friends? Yeah, with my cabin. Right? So what else has been fun? The food is good. Oh, I was just going to ask you. It is good, huh? What, do you, what kinds of food do you have? Bagels. Bagels? Yeah, hash browns, pizza. Oh. S'mores. No fruits and veggies? Oh yeah, watermelon. <laughs> no veggies though. <laughs> no veggies, okay, great. Um, so what are you gonna do the rest of the week? Do you know the schedule? Nope. And so what's your cabin like? It's big. Yeah? There's a bunch of girls in it. No boys are allowed. Oh, phew. How many girls? Like 11. So is it a new cabin that you're in? No. So how has this helped you with your diabetes? Has it, has it helped you be more independent with uh, regulating your insulin? Yeah. How, so have you learned new things about how to regulate your, your insulin? Yeah. Like I did my pump site by myself for the first time yesterday. Really? That's awesome. So you're gonna keep doing it yourself now and you can do it yourself at home? Yeah. That's great. Have you made new friends? Yeah. What else are you doing here? Mm, fires. We do fires. You do some oars? Yeah. Okay. And we go in the pond. We do crafts, yeah. You like crafts, don't you? So what else, so what's your general impression are you feeling about the camp? I love it. You love it. Mm. And you have fun. I have things in common with everyone. So it's different than at school then, right? Yeah. You gonna come next year? Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, Elise. Welcome. <laughs>